Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi, walking and talking on the beautiful beach over here in Torre Vieja, España. Of course, talking about Bitcoin, blockchain and life. I have five amazing Bitcoin charts, short term plus long term. Also a trading tip, a very important one. Of course, some travel advice answering one of the questions. Again, a cool question that I need to answer in this video and talking about the news because something really cool is happening. And yes, I'm gonna start with saying happy pizza day. But I will talk about that a little bit later. Let's first jump into the charts. Bam. The first chart for today, guys, is this four hour chart. On this four hour chart, we can see exactly, uh, yes, there is a sell signal over there. Uh, that candle will probably close down below the yellow stepping line. If it's gonna close down below the yellow stepping line, then take profits from that buy signal over there or that buy signal that you are still in over there. There is a moment you need to take profit. Do I believe we can still go higher? Yes, we can. But sometimes it's also okay to take profits and to open again just a new trade. Now let's quickly go to the next chart here. Let's zoom out to the daily chart. Because a lot of people are showing you this flag pattern that we are breaking out of a flag pattern. And normally when you break out of the flag pattern, you can also retest this flag pattern. Uh, I don't find it a really beautiful flag pattern to be very honest if I look at it um, as it is just too many, like it's too long distance for me. But let's, let's say it's a flag pattern. Let's, let's change this into um, line so you can see a little bit better what I mean like then then this would be the flag pattern over there you see uh, another line from here to there something like this this would be the flag now we just broke out of this flag normally you retest this flag before you continue again to higher to 83 84k levels so that could happen. So we could go here again to that 71, 72K level, maybe pull back to 67 again, the top of that flag pattern to like confirm that it was a breakout and then bam, take it higher to 83K levels. Uh, do you want to wait with buying? I don't know. I would dollar cost average already at these prices and then, you know, uh, either way, take that pump of like almost 10K again, because then it's like nine or 8K or 10K in profit. It's all profit. Now, Let's jump into some very interesting charts. This is the first one, guys. This one is showing you this Bitcoin ETF net flows weekly in dollars. So we can see like uh, there's a couple of weeks we had over the $2 billion mark flowing in into the Bitcoin spot ETFs. Yes, we had also some negative weeks over here flowing out. And the last two weeks are positive again flowing in. If you want to see uh, the concrete numbers, then look to this one over here. You can see all the numbers, um, IBIT, FBTC, BitB, ARK, uh, all of those. You can see that most of the, these reds are, of course, the negative one but the black ones are the positive ones the 20 years we had 237 uh, million flowing in here 221 million 250 300 100 is a lot of still bitcoin spot ETS being bought if you want to check these numbers a little bit more then just pause the video guys i'm going to continue to more important charts like this one this was the all-time high here in 2017 of course the bear market bottom in 2019 the moment we broke that all-time high in the previous bull market now of 2021, you know, we, could, we went sideways. We had trouble, troubles breaking it. But when we broke it, we had that massive run into the, a year later, almost to the bull market top there in 2021, guys. Now, we can see exactly the same thing playing out again. Yes, we have this support level over here that we were fighting, that we broke. Now we have the all-time high over there that we broke but came down below again and now we are almost above it again. This is a very important part of the cycle. This is this number two over there. That number two, when we break that level, that is when we go into the second part of the bull market all the way into 2025. Where might that end? I tell you, yes, above 100K. I have said many times between 120 and 160K, but a lot of people think different. A lot of people think that we might go higher. So, for example, on this chart, this Bitcoin's rising tide, you can see, look, this is November 2012. This is that cycle. Then we went all the way to $100. Then we went all the way above $1,000 even, you know, here over there, bam. That was 2014, uh, 2013 top. Then here, 10K, that was amazing. We went even to 20K here. That's the top of 20K, 2017. So that's a 2016 halving, 2017 top. 
and of course also the bear market again here in 2019. And then we had of course the 2020 halving, and then we went to the 2021 top over there, double top, and to the bear market. And where are we now? This is the 100k level. We are now here, April 2024. We are now in May. That was the halving. From that halving, we just got started. Now we need to go and see this huge area going above that 100k level. This move that we see here, we want to see here now. And then again, after that, we will see another bear market going down below these levels, probably around 50k uh, as a bear market bottom. Normally, we don't go lower than the previous halving. So that would mean a bear market bottom of 63k. I know it all sounds really ridiculous at the moment because that means we would go to 200k, but there is a lot of people that tell us that we could go to 200k. Also, this one showing you exactly where we are in the cycle. We are just about to break this midline there. And every time when we are about to break that midline, here we tried it, we fell down to the bottom line, here we tried it, then we went bam, above to the top line. You see, and if we go to this top line, yes, that will definitely be above 100k, even close to 200k. We are just getting started. It's just amazing to see where we are now in the cycle. This could be a target. To be a little bit more precise, if you look at the monthly chart, for example, I found this one on Twitter. The first time here was 2,679%, all the way up to 20K. Then that second time over here, we went up almost with 534%, 57,000 US dollar per Bitcoin. Now here, number three, let's say from this level now here, 67K, we only go up 300%. That means we would end at 241,000 US dollar. That's 177,000 US dollar higher than we are now. And you can see that these are all lining up. Just pause the video, analyze all these numbers. But every time we see the same. We see every time the same. We see the growth. It is decreasing. But even if we have a decreasing growth, but we follow this yellow trend line, the top of the trend line would be 240K. Definitely a possibility. I tell you every time, meh. 120, 160k. But that doesn't mean this is not a possibility, 240k. Another chart that's very bullish is this Bitcoin top indicator. This red line has indicated the top in the previous bull cycles. Only the previous one now here, 2021, we didn't reach it because we had a double top. Single top, single top, single top. This is a double top. Just imagine that this would have been a single top, we would have reached that line again but then we wouldn't have this double top. We would have a single top and then went into the bear market. Two times the power, two times the volume, bam, would have reached that line. If we would reach another single top, that line at the moment is at 280,000 US dollar. That would mean we are now here just leaving the circle in this area. Here we are now. And then bam, run all the way up to that 280K level. Also a possibility. Again, I've been stating 120 to 160K, but these are definitely possibilities. I hope you really enjoyed those charts, guys. Yes, in the short term, we saw exactly the target that I predicted already for a couple of weeks, 72K was hit. At the moment, we are pulling back below 70K, around 69,700-ish. Is this bad? As you saw in the short term, we did close the candle down below the yellow stepping line. So yes, you should take profit in that four hour trade. Uh, long term, this is just part of that massive bull market. Like I said yesterday, there will be ups and downs. And in these dips, you will always be doubting, is this the end? This is not the end. The end will be in 2025. And until that moment, it's still very safe to accumulate a little bit more Bitcoin if you believe that Bitcoin goes above 100K. Because each Bitcoin will give you then 30K profit. And that's enough profit for me to be very honest. Now, that were the charts. Let's quickly jump into the trading tip to show you some really cool stuff. In the last couple of videos, guys, I told you already which indicators I use to determine if the bull market top is in. Um, I also have created a chart with all these indicators on it, and I will start to share this link with all my VIPs in the VIP channel. So if you want to become a VIP, go to the bitcoinfamily.com and you will get access to the ultimate chart that tells you exactly when the bull market top will be in, guys. Now, 
there is no real trading tip today, but the trading tip for today is sometimes you need to spend your Bitcoins. Just like this guy Laszlo did, he spent 10,000 Bitcoins for two pizzas in 2010. At that moment, the Bitcoin price was around four cents, so he paid $40 for two pizzas. We still don't know if the pizza owner still owns those 10,000 Bitcoins, but at least that was one of the first transactions done by a public person, 10,000 Bitcoins for two pizzas. Now, that's what we celebrate on the 22nd of May every time. So today, all the Bitcoiners all over the world will be eating pizza. The other thing that I want to talk about because of this pizza day is, just imagine in 2010, you thought 10,000 Bitcoins was nothing. You said, ah, it's 40 bucks, let's pay it for two pizzas. You, could, you didn't realize at that moment that it would go to the price that it is now, $70,000 per Bitcoin. But the same thing is also for now, for today. Today, you're paying one Bitcoin for a very beautiful car. I know for sure in 14 years time, we will be then in 2038, that the Bitcoin price maybe will be like a million or more than a million. And if you then look back 14 years again to today, you will be like, what the fuck? I paid a million dollars for that Volkswagen <laughs> because you can buy a Volkswagen for one Bitcoin or a cyber truck for one Bitcoin. And in 14 years time, you will be shit. I wasted a million on a Volkswagen. Just like that guy is now shit. I wasted 10,000 pizzas. I hope it doesn't uh, <clears throat> run me over. I just wasted 10,000 Bitcoins on two pizzas. Every time again, again, when we're going to look back in the future, we will realize, wow, we spend those Bitcoins and they are much more worth now. And that's also the question that a lot of people always ask me. It's like, Didi, why do you always talk about spending Bitcoins? That is like really expensive what you buy at the moment. I'm gonna answer that question one more time. For us as the Bitcoin family, it doesn't make a difference. We need to spend our Bitcoins as we are still all in. We don't have bank accounts already for seven years. We don't have any other way of spending, only our Bitcoins. So either I exchange my Bitcoins to fiat currencies, to Euro, but then I lose my Bitcoins, or I spend my Bitcoins directly and I also lose my Bitcoins, but I'm supporting the community, the miners and all the people that are supporting Bitcoin. So what would you choose? Would you choose to first exchange Bitcoin into a stable coin like the Euro and then spend it? Or would you prefer to spend Bitcoins directly and support the crypto community? I know what we as a family choose. We as a family choose, of course, peer-to-peer -peer direct payments. When it's not possible, I will use these debit cards, for example. There's a lot of links down below to those different debit cards. Why these debit cards? Because with those debit cards, they give me the possibility to spend my Bitcoins latest as possible. It will stay in Bitcoin, if you use the Bybit debit card, until the moment I spend. And in the moment I spend, I will lose a little bit of Bitcoin and of course the shop or the restaurant will receive euros. But at least I keep to hold my Bitcoin as long as possible. I stay all in. So for us as a family, it doesn't matter. For all those other people that still have a bank account and fiat currencies coming in, please spend those fiat currencies and hold all your Bitcoin. If you have a little bit of fiat currencies left, accumulate Bitcoin. Make sure that your Bitcoin portfolio is bigger than your fiat currency portfolio because fiat is inflationary. You will be able to buy less and less and less in the future. And Bitcoin is deflationary. You will be able to buy more and more and more in the future. In 2010, it costed 10,000 Bitcoins for two pizzas. At the moment, it will cost you 0 0.00001 Bitcoin to buy two pizzas. Now, that was the trading tip for today. When you're traveling, guys, you will realize it will cost you more energy than you ever thought. Traveling just costs you energy. It's a lot of work, it's a lot of thinking, it's a lot of walking, traveling, so it will cost you energy. So it's very important that you use that energy for the right thing. My travel tip for today is, is that you should shift your energy to all those things that you can create. Never use your energy for those things that you can't control. If you can't control a situation or a person or whatever it is, if you can't control it, don't give it energy because it will do what it will do. It will go like it will need to go. All the things that you can create, that is the things you should shift your energy to because if you create new things, you at least create what you want to do and what you want to create. So while traveling, I think the most important tip I can give you is make good usage of your energy. 
don't try to be mad or throw a lot of energy at the fact that a bus came late or a taxi driver came late or that you missed an airplane or whatever might happen during your travels. Don't shift your energy to those things that you can't control. That's wasting your energy on stuff that you can't control. Useless. Start to focus your energies on the things that you can control, that you can create, that you can do at that moment. That's where you need to shift your energy to, to all those things that you have control on. Never use energy for things that you can't control. Always use energy for all the things that you can control. That's my travel tip for today. If you want to save some energy, shift your energy to those things that you can control. Then we come to one of the questions uh, of one of the followers, Didi. Will you ever be able to buy back your Bitcoins if you sell them at the bull market top? That was the question. I think it's a valid question because this guy is stating, hey, BlackRock and all those spot ETFs, they are buying up all the Bitcoins continuously. Why would they stop buying? If you sell them at the top, will you ever be able to buy back at that bottom? So my answer to that question is yes. I have no doubt that I will be able to buy these Bitcoins back at the bottom. And why? Because the amount of Bitcoins that the BlackRocks and the spot ETFs companies combined are owning at the moment is 2.8%. That means that 97% is in the hands of probably retail investors and other institutional investors, but probably investors that do have emotions. And those emotions will make those investors sell their Bitcoin at that bull market top and probably also at other moments that they should not be selling, like now, 70K. So in my honest opinion, there will always be an opportunity to buy back Bitcoins because this whole system is built on supply and demand. There will always be supply and there will always be demand. If there is no healthy supply and demand balance anymore, then this system is not going to work anymore. And it will take till to the year 2140 for the last Bitcoins to be minted or mined. So until that time, we will still be able to buy newly, freshly mined Bitcoins every day. This four year cycle, 450 Bitcoins each day. So there's always new Bitcoins coming into the market, which makes me believe that it will always be possible to buy Bitcoins. And also those BlackRock people just understand the spot ETF companies, they don't act for themselves, they act for the clients. And if those clients determine, hey shit, I made like 400% profit, I wanna take profit, they will sell their Bitcoins. And then BlackRock needs to sell their Bitcoins. So there is always people taking profit, there's always people being greedy, and there's always opportunities to buy back cheaper. I do agree, I don't think that the bear market bottom will be 70% again. I think the bear market bottom will be somewhere between 40 and 55%. So the crash is gonna be less deep. But still, I am convinced I will always be able to buy back some Bitcoins because there's still a shitload of new people that don't understand that four year cycle. They will start to buy when Bitcoin crashes from 70K to 60K and they are like, wow, now I buy cheap and they start to buy and then we go to 50K, for example, or 45K and they're like, oh shit, I make loss, let's sell. I will be there to pick them up. When the fear is on the market, when the blood is on the streets, I will be there to buy those Bitcoins. And that fear on the market and that blood on the streets will always be there because that's just part of a system where there is supply and demand. So I'm not afraid that I'm not able to buy back Bitcoins because I don't think that BlackRock and all the other spots the EVDS will have that much control on the market. The biggest part of the Bitcoins is still in control of all those emotion people. People that trade with emotions. You know that Bitcoin cheat sheet? That one that is saying euphoria and then going down again on all these levels? A lot of people are still attached to that emotion and they will be selling their Bitcoins. So that's my answer to your question. I need to walk that side guys now because yeah, the beach is not that long and this guy is working over there. He's cleaning the beach. Um, the news for today guys is very interesting because we are unschwapped. What does it mean? Klaus Schwab is leaving the World Economic Forum as uh, one of the uh, CEOs. So he's not the boss anymore of the World Economic Forum. He wants to act on the back. Yes, he doesn't want to be Dirk Klaus Schwab anymore that wants to fuck us all because of a central bank's digital currency and of course a social credit system. Klaus Schwab is one of the persons I really, really, really can't understand, can't agree and really, really, really don't like because this guy is one of those people behind that whole 
fucking World Economic Forum system that just wants to enslave the people in a very modern way. You know, wants to keep you poor, wants to turn us all into their slaves. You know, that 1% elite, that is Klaus Schwab. So for me, congratulations Klaus Schwab with fucking off out of the Economic Forum. I'm very happy that you finally realized that you need to leave this stage. But the thing that worries me now is, what kind of person will we get back? Will it be another Klaus Schwab? Klaus Schwab 2, maybe a little very small one, like this Dr. Evil guy, so a little Klaus Schwab here, with a, with a high voice, Klaus Schwab, like something like that. Will we again get that evil person that wants to make a social credit system in Europe tied to a central bank's digital currency, full control on people? That's of course something that we don't know yet. We don't know what we will get back. I'm very happy Klaus Schwab is gone. Auf Wiedersehen, tschüss, tschüss Klaus Schwab, auf Wiedersehen. But we don't know what we will get back. So very exciting times ahead. Let's see what we will get back. But I do hope it will be a normal person that really understands that the path that Klaus Schwab was setting is not the right path. We don't need a centralized social credit system for whole Europe. We don't need all that stuff that he wanted to have. And yes, we definitely don't need forced vaccinations and all that stuff. We need freedom and a decentralized future. So let's hope that the replacement of Mr. Schwab is a normal guy, not like a retarded, old-fashioned, serious, like almost dictatorish guy, like Klaus Schwab. Klaus Schi, auf Wiedersehen, tschüss. Yeah, I'm playing around a little bit with the light, guys, because it's difficult, the sun is rising, so the, the image is not as clear as normally. That's why I love to record those videos there with a beautiful angle, with the palm trees and everything, because then the colors are more beautiful. But today I'm walking the beach. I hoped I would see some booty. There is no booty, there is, yeah, there is booty, but it's all like guy booty. And I don't think most of the followers want to see guy booty. Because 70% of the followers still is men. Yes, we should have more women as followers. Or maybe a lot of women are watching on the subscription of their husband. That's also possible, I don't know. But at least YouTube tells me at the moment, hey Didi, 70% uh, of your subscribers is men. Uh, yes, and there's still only the option to choose man or woman. No other option. I don't want any other option. And the end of the video, guys, of course, the inspirational path. Uh, the inspirational path for today comes from something that I myself use many times in life. And why? Because I speak a lot, not only in YouTube videos, but also at home. Also, when we are on a birthday, I always speak. Because I always need to remind myself that who I am is not what I know. Who I am is what I want to learn. I need to keep learning, I need to keep educating myself. And that's very difficult when you always want to speak. I need to learn to listen a little bit more. Because when you listen, you learn new things. So for me, it's very important that you realize that what you know is not who you are. What you want to learn is a little bit more who you are. Because that is exactly pushing you as a person towards what you want to know and to become a better person. If you just build your whole image around what you know, you will never change. You will always be that same person that knows something. Yes, I know a lot about Bitcoin. Yes, I know a lot about that. But if you want to really determine who you are, you need to focus on what you want to learn. All those new things that you want to learn in life will determine what kind of person you will become. And I will always try to grow to a better version of myself. But to become that better version of myself, I need to educate myself, I need to learn. And for that, I need to listen, so, or read books, or whatever it is that your perfect medium is to educate yourself. I love to listen to podcasts, I love to read some books. At the moment, I'm reading a book that was given to me about health. You know, I want to educate my, myself a little bit more about health. Uh, what kind of different water is there, like distilled water, normal water, all that stuff, just to become a little more healthy. And why? Because the person who I am at the moment, physically, health-wise, is not the person who I am. I want to become more healthy. So I need to educate myself on how to become more healthy. And the moment I educate myself on how to become more healthy, that is the moment I also will become more healthy. I will become that person that I want to be. And that same thing counts for Bitcoin. If you want to become good at Bitcoin, trading, hodling, or understanding Bitcoin, you need to educate yourself. And yes, of course, I'm very thankful you're watching all my daily videos. And yes, they will be helpful and they will be educating you. 
But aside of that, if you want to become better and better and better, do read some books about it, do visit conferences, do your own research a little bit more. There's also other influencers that have amazing, amazing information. If you want to educate yourself a little bit better even about Bitcoin, like technical wise, then for example, Andreas Antonopoulos is one of the people that you really, really should watch some videos of. This guy is really good. And now there was some booty on the beach over there, but I'm walking that way so you can't see it. So I need to educate myself on the times that I need to walk over here that we have the best views. <laughs> but that's the thing that I want to share with you guys. You are not the person because of what you know. You're the person because of what you want to know, what you want to learn. That is where you turn into that person that you really want to be. So that's very important in life that you shift your focus to becoming that person that you want to be in the future. And then you do that by shifting your focus to educating yourself on new things in life. More important things that you're focusing on right now. That was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, let me know down below what did you think about this video? What do you think about the tips, the charts, everything else? Thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing day. See you tomorrow again. Bam.